So your guys' show Helix centers around the Center for Disease Control. Are either of you germaphobes? No, I'm not no. a germaphobe, I wouldn't say. I wash my hands. That's good. Wh yeah. What about you? I am not a germaphobe. I am a friend of germs. I invite germs into my life. I'm, 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 uh, yes, I'm on good terms with germs. I guess I am too. <laughs> <laughs> Inviting them into your life. So we're three episodes in for Helix. If somebody hasn't tuned in yet, why should they? It's a unique psychological thriller. That's what's cool about it. And it's based in real science. It's based in a real life fear for people about viral outbreaks that kill people every year. Flus, flu season, everyone worried about getting the flu shot or not. And then it takes a really interesting sci-fi turn. So when you combine the real science mixed with the sci-fi, it makes it a pretty unique show. Yeah, it, it, it deals with a very primal fear, I think, and that is the fear of, you know, the fear of germs, the fear of things we can't see that will possess us and kill us. And, uh, but it's a little more based in, you know, uh, uh, with germs, it's a, with v viral outbreaks, it's a little more based in reality than, for instance, with, you know, demonic possession or something like that. But it's kind of essentially the same thing. So when you're reading the script, obviously it's very intense. So do you ever get scared when you're reading it, or you read it as an actor? Um, I read it for story first. I have my, oh, oh, what? Oh, no, really? That's going to happen? I, you know, I have those moments, but it doesn't necessarily scare me. It just gets me more excited about, oh, this is where this is going to go. I, uh, it kind of gets you more pumped up than anything, but not necessarily scared. That's okay. for the viewer to get scared. Yeah. What about you? I have those moments on set. I'm like, oh, no, this is happening? And then they're like, we're rolling. You really shouldn't make those noises during the scene. <laughs> Don't scream. So, yeah. Not good to scream while you're filming. <laughs> yeah. Ah! I scream like a baby sometimes. It, ha it happens. Yeah. So what made you guys want to sign up to do the show? What was the audition process like? Um, I auditioned for this on my birthday. And I loved, I loved what I was reading in the audition sides. She's a, it was a great character. She's really well written, and she's intelligent, and she's, uh, she's brave, but she's not without fear. And she's, uh, she's just a very full-bodied, great character. And, um, and I loved that she had such a strong, intelligent background in science. I thought that was interesting. Uh, they offered this to me after uh, they couldn't get the five guys they wanted, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, and I was in love with it from the first moment. It's just the sort of the situation of it. Uh, it's kind of a favorite genre of mine. I loved, uh, uh, you know, the thing, both the John Carpenter version and the Howard Hawks version, especially the Howard Hawks version. Uh, a great a, a movie that I loved very much in the 70s was uh, The Andromeda Strain. Um, and so it's... I just dig this this kind of thing, and and uh, you know I wanted to go to Montreal. Mm. I love Montreal. Montreal's that, amazing. That's a good place to film. And so you both played doctors on the show. What kind of research did you have to do for the characters? YouTube, okay. and we had uh, we had a somebody on set that would help us with things, learning how to use the equipment, and so that we don't look like we're idiots when we're touching the microscope or dealing with all the scientific stuff. And um, I would just ask questions to people who happened to be scientists so that I can know what I need to sound like when I get in there, how to pronounce the big, crazy, scary words. I, on the other hand, did precisely zero research um, um, and uh, asked, anytime I had a question, I asked Kira. There you go. <laughs>